In this video at Tobacco University, we're going to be looking at crime scene overall processing protocol, kind of that overview on how you go about processing a crime scene. So starting with the investigation. Investigation involves and always involves that Lacard's exchange principle, the fact that something is always leaving that trace, and it's our goal here as investigators to try to find those trace evidence. Keep in mind, we don't want to overthink things sometimes. We want to use simple logic to help direct our investigation. Uh, we want to use the scientific method as well as far as going through the problem-solving process. And as always, we want to stay organized. Organized so that we can refer back to notes, refer back to diagrams, photos, pictures, um, evidence collected, so that we can find answers um, to questions that may be asked shortly after or long-term after the initial investigation had taken place. And we're looking at the diagram here, just kind of a, an example of problem solving. And if I give you the weights of these objects in three different areas, can we calculate the weight in kilograms of the two cucumbers alone? So when we're looking at forensic investigation techniques, uh, we want to look at recognition, which is that surveying the scene, uh, document observations, collecting evidence. Then we have identification, which is the comparison to what is out of the norm, what doesn't look right. Then we have our individualization, which is the evaluate and interpret process. And then the last, we have the reconstruction, which is involving the report and presenting of findings to kind of reconstruct what we think uh, may have occurred based on all of the previous collection of evidence and organization of that evidence. Now, how do we go about this? Well, step one is interview. We want to interview the first officer at the scene or the victim to determine what allegedly might have happened. Ask what the crime took place and how the crime was committed. Um, note, however, this information may not be factual, but it's intended to provide an investigator a starting place. So it doesn't mean just because you interviewed someone who was there, you take their word as 100% correct, but it does allow you to, to provide you a starting place. Then you can lead, that can help you lead and help e the examination phase. We identify possible evidence, select a point of entry and a point of exit, develop a general layout of the crime scene. Uh, so all these can be very important in that an examination process. And again, that first step of that interview can help you at least initially uh, plan and organize how you're going to go about the examination step. Then we look at documentation. So this is very important. You want to create photographic records and a rough sketch of the crime scene. Identify the exact position of deceased victim and other evidence within the crime scene. This can be a very time-consuming and tedious process, but it is vitally important not only to keep things organized, but to also uh, ensure that anything you collect uh, is also upholds in court as evidence. And lastly, here we're looking at the processing step. So this applies to both physical uh, and testimonial evidence. Uh, technicians are responsible for identifying, evaluating, collecting physical evidence from the crime scene, as this will be further an an analyzed in the crime scene laboratory. So this processing point, so we're collecting some more of that specific data. And we may not be doing this for every piece of data collected, but based on kind of what we think may have happened or what kind of events we're looking at, they can help guide. Um, the process where that time is going to be spent as we're looking at kind of recreating what may have occurred at a particular crime scene we're investigating.